right. It's Jean retired in Mexico. And we ask one question on this channel, if you're new, which is, do they write them and sing them like they used to? Now, a lot of people, young and old, yeah, young and old, they think that the new music, uh, they don't think it's as good as the old music, but I am not so sure. I'm a defender of the 21st century. And today, speaking of that, we're going to go through the year 2008. So we've done the years 2000 through 2007. This is a 30 favorite albums countdown. Not saying these are the best, but these are my personal favorites. And I don't always go with the critics' choices every time. I have a few of my own selections. So let's go ahead and uh, bring this up. If you like what we're doing, uh, seeing you reacting to the new music of the 21st century, hit that like or subscribe button and all the good things that go with that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I appreciate everyone's support. I just hit 3,100 subs subscribers today, so that's fantastic. Let's go ahead and bring up this list. And I only have three honorable mentions today. So what we're going to do is we're going to count down 30 through 21. And uh, we'll do a three-parter here. And <clears throat> so anyway... Uh, I usually have at least five or six honorable mentions, but not today. Uh, I, I've just got three. There's basically 33 albums that I that I really like from this year. And I do include anthologies and best ofs, though I'm going to say that there's not a lot of compilations this time around. I, in past years, I've had plenty. But here there are... Um, I think I've only got maybe one or two anthologies on here, and the rest of these are are new. So, uh, and we and I'll warn you, we got a lot of uh, world music, international, Latin on here. You know, you know, a few selections, and I I think that's where it's at. Really, world music is the big place to explore, and that's why I like having subscribers from all over the world. So. Number 33 is a uh, comedy, musical comedy, Flight of the Concords. This is a uh, Australian TV show. You know, and I, I really found this album funny the first 15 times, but like a lot of comedy, you know, it wears out its welcome, but they're very talented, and if if you haven't heard songs like uh, Bowie, <laughs> which is a spoof on David Bowie, and there's a Prince cover and a song called The Most Beautiful Girl in the Room, Not in the World. So anyway, wanted to give a shout out to that. And at 32 and 31 are a couple R&B albums that are pretty darn good. This first one. Al Green, and I'm not sure if you can see this, but Al Green, Lay It Down, uh, much better than one would expect, produced by The Roots. And uh, I like it. It's a little bit one note on the lyrics. It's um, just, uh, hey, you're the woman of my dreams, every single song. So, uh, But anyway, I still highly recommend it. it sounds good. And number 31 is a Neo Soul album by one of my favorites, but just missed the list, Raphael Sadiq, The Way I See It. Th this could be a Motown album. I mean, it's so perfectly retro produced, except the bass. The bass is really thumping and kicking, and uh, the bass w was a lot thinner on those Motown who was that? James Jamerson was a bass player on Motown. And and uh, this is great stuff. But anyway, let's get into the uh, meat of it. Number 30, Randy Newman, Harps and Angels. So, you know, R Randy Newman, people love his early work, but some of his latter work I, I like just as well. And this is a six-man band plus a huge orchestra, and it, it's just clever as can be. 
funny songs uh, like Potholes and about aging. And you've got uh, A Few Words in Defense of Our Country, which is a fantastic song. If you haven't heard that, it's very witty and poignant. Uh, he also does a reprisal of an earlier song called Feels Like Home, which is pretty sweet. So this is Randy Newman in his Walt Disney era. Uh, but I think he's still great. He's still got a good voice. And, you know, he can be very politically incorrect. And I like that. I like that in the same way that I like George Carlin in comedy. Uh, the song Korean Parents. You know, probably some people want to cancel that song. But I like that he just says the way he feels. And I think he's clever enough to not be offensive, uh, in, in my opinion. But uh, I, I, I do like this album uh, quite a bit, but it only made it at number 30. Number 29, The Fall. I really like The Fall. This is Imperial Wax Solvent. And my favorite song on here is 50-Year-Old Man, which is hilarious. It's a 11 minutes long, includes banjo. <laughs> it's just whacked out. But uh, I just played this again last night. And the drum, uh, the well, the drummer, I was going to say the band, but the band is muscular and agile is my word for it. And there's a guy named uh, Kieran Melling, if I said his name right. Boy, he just kills it on the drums. So uh, Marky e. Smith got a partly new band for this project, and they're great. They're great. We did a uh, we did a video uh, on the Master Monday series where you can see those guys playing doing a, doing a live version of Fifty Year Old Man, and just great stuff. But uh, uh, yeah, you know, there's just, I'm trying to think of the latchkey kid and all these different songs. It's pretty hard rocking, pretty hard rocking. And the fall have always been, uh, one of those bands that's kind of post-punk, but kind of their own thing. Uh, they didn't really fit neatly into any genre. And I enjoy a Marky e. Smith man. Does he slur his words on this? album you know intentionally intentionally uh it, it's his style <laughs> and, and funny enough i can still understand most of the words without a lyric sheet but anyway imperial wax solvent a great latter day effort from the fall all right number 28 one of my latin choices uh this is uh juana molina from Argentina, her album Un Dia, which means one day. It's, um, it's, it's, oh, by the way, this album cover, this has got to be my favorite album cover of the entire top 30 that we're going to do. I absolutely love Juana Molina's, um, album cover. She, by the way, was a, a an, an actress a television actress in, in Buenos Aires. And when she decided to go into music, she kind of got spurned by the Argentinians a little bit, uh, but then became popular in the U.S. and Japan and the U.K. and some other places. So, yeah, this one's a quiet album, and it, it's got, um, when I was reading about it on Wiki, it says it's abstract, which means it isn't about anything. Uh, of course, because the words are in Spanish, I probably wouldn't have known that without uh, without w Wiki's help. Because her uh, her other albums have been more politically political or socially conscious, but this one's abstract and it's got a lot of layered loops, and it's quiet and it's kind of good evening music. I like it. And if you're not into Latin, this is really more of a uh, electronic album. And it, it, it's really good late evening listening. I recommend it. Juana Molina. Um, let's see. What are these albums so far? Randy Newman was not rated on um, 
on uh, all. I, I don't have any information here. Uh, four stars, all music. Imperial Wax Solvent, four stars. 81 Metacritic, seven and a half pitchfork. Hundia, 77 on Metacritic, four stars on all music, and also seven and a half on pitchfork. So, yeah, good albums. I would give all of these probably three and a half stars. All right, number 27, we're staying in South America. Yeah, we're staying in South America, although there's a UK connection. And this is the band Sidestepper. Now, before I show you the album cover, I'm just going to show you a picture of the band Sidestepper. And what they are is they do electro cumbia, and it is so addictive. And this UK producer, DJ Richard Blair, heard them and he connected with them and they worked on this project together called the Buena Vibra Sound System. So that'd be a pun on the Buena Vista Social Club, but the Buena Vibra, Buena Vibra Sound System. Awesome. Awesome. And it's actually technically a compilation, kind of. Uh, it's some new tracks and then some remixes of things that they had done just a year or two earlier. So it's kind of a new album, kind of a compilation. I absolutely love it. Uh, every time now I talk here in Mexico, we meet a lot of people that either are from Colombia or are going to Colomb Colomb Colombia. I, I always want to say Colombia, which is Americans saying it the wrong way, Colombia. But after listening to this album, I just want to go, Colombia, because that's how they say it on the album. I love it. It's so danceable, but it has some weird production things where the music kind of fades out and fades back in. They do a lot of tricks, really good club music. I'm, yeah, you got to check them out. The Buena Vista, the, Vi the Buena, the Buena Vibra Sound System by the band Sidestepper. Electro Cumbia. Colombia is a hot place for music. Uh, Africa and Colombia are two of the top um, continent nation music spots in the world. And it's great. And we're going to stay with Latin, but now we're moving north of South America. And, and I do have this um, CD, but it's it's in a binder and I forgot to pull it out. It's it's with my international music. But this is the uh, Oaxacan American singer Lila Downs and her album Shake Away, which is her second Spanish English album. Uh, I love this. It's mostly originals. It's well produced. Her voice, multi octave range and powerful. She can sing low high mid-range it doesn't matter and just belt it out or sing soft she's got all the dynamics and all the range and all the emotion wonderful shake away by lila downs uh there are there's a couple uh there's some covers on here um for example she does fleetwood max black magic woman or if you prefer santana's black magic woman and she also does a lucinda williams cover which she translates into spanish but highly recommended um i'm still at about three and a, well i think we're creeping up now to about four stars um i think the sidestepper and the lila downs will go four stars on those i don't have a lot of uh critical information on that except uh the lila downs all music gave that one four and a half stars they love it and, and i agree and i saw her in concert it was the last concert i saw before i moved to mexico october 2019 and i had to give up concerts when i came here because it's a small community you know unless i traveled to mexico city but 15 to 20 million people. Uh, I don't know. A little intimidated. But uh, Shake Away, it's... 
I don't know. It's just there's some socially conscious songs on here. Um, and there's a song about a black dog, and it, it's just fun. It's a great album. All right. Number 25, sticking with the international, and I have a uh, digipack of this. And this is DJ Cheb Isaba Devotion. Now, this is on the Six Degrees label, which is a well known label for international music, but otherwise probably not a household name. Uh, I love this album. So, what's his story, DJ Isaba? Rest in peace. He died about 10 years ago, I think, of stomach cancer. Um, but he was born in Algeria, and then he moved uh, to Paris when he was young, and then ended up in San Francisco a few decades ago and became a DJ. Uh, I think he started DJing in Paris, but really hit his stride in San Francisco. But he became interested in India. So Algeria, France, United States, and he ended up making these trips to India where he would uh, record uh, people sometimes on the street, um, you know, not necessarily famous musicians, but just uh, almost, almost street recordings or field recordings in a sense. And then he would put electronic beats to it. I absolutely love this. And uh, the last song on here is the title track, Devotion. It is about eight minutes long, and it starts with the chiming of bells, and you can hear uh, traffic on the street, and then he puts these beats to it, and it's so beautiful and meditative. And I've read that this is popular in clubs, that he was a popular uh, club DJ, but it always feels a little mellow to me i i don't know unless you're in the chill out room or something uh wonderful wonderful stuff and he's got actually quite a few uh plays on spotify so there's only let's see there's eight tracks on here and it runs over an hour so they're fairly long songs but absolutely beautiful sung in the indian uh, languages and I love it. So you just have to check it out. I, I thought about putting little snippets of music on this, of this uh, reaction here, but I don't know. Then, then things get blocked and they get messy. All right, number 24, also an India connection. So a, a lot of my international stuff is, is at the bottom here, but I really love it. This is another four-star album. Miles from India. This is by various artists. So I'm going to bring up the Wikipedia link because there's a little bit to talk about on this. It's called Miles from India because it's covers of Miles Davis. And I have more Miles Davis CDs. Yeah, I have CDs. That's because I'm old. But I, I keep them. I have uh, more Miles Davis in my collection than any other artist, yeah, anybody, you name it, Bob Dylan, anybody. I have more Miles Davis. And this is a who's who of people going clear back to the 1950s. I mean, you have Jimmy Jimmy Cobb, I believe, on here, the drummer that played on Kind of Blue in 1959. He passed away a couple, three years ago, and he's on here. Uh, you have Ron Carter from the 60s Miles Davis band. Uh, all the way through, you have people like Pete Cosey, who's a wicked guitar player that played with Miles in the 70s and then on through his 80s. You have Chick Corea on here. Uh, Lenny White from Return to Forever. Uh, Wallace Roney plays most of the trumpet. Uh, uh, but then they mix with these Indian musicians. So you have a whole bunch of Indian musicians on here. Um, some names are very difficult for me to pronounce. Rudresh Mahanthapa, for example. And there's uh, 
at least 10 Indian musicians on here. And the whole concept is to take uh, Miles Davis recordings and then use various Indian instruments, like not just the sitar, but you have, where's the, uh, per oh, they don't have it on here. Yeah, anyway, I thought they had a uh, personnel listing with instruments, but yeah, you have um, all sorts of woodwinds and stringed instruments, and it's melding the Indian with jazz and it's a beautiful hybrid I, I love it it's dense it takes a while to get into this album on first or second listen it's it's pleasant but it it's you know like layers of the onion it just keeps revealing more when you play it so that's uh, another four star album at number 24 Number 23, I had this album. I sold it before I moved here to um, Mexico. But this is uh, the London band, The Duke Spirit. Not really well known in the United States. Uh, their album, Neptune. I really like this album. It's got uh, a lot of great melody. I, dis I disagree with Pitchfork. They only gave it a 6.2. Um I think this is an underrated album. Uh, Layla Moss, Layla, Layla, Layla Moss is the uh, singer, and she's got such unique phrasing. My favorite songs are The Step and Walk, Wooden Heart, and My Sunken Treasure. On My Sunken Treasure, you should hear her just like punch the syllables. And she doesn't sing like that on any other song on the album. Just that one, she just da, 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 she just punches the syllables. And so she changes up her singing, and the band is uh, very melodic. Now, apparently, they're influenced by people like the Jesus and Mary Chain. Uh, Wiki, that's according to Wiki, that they kind of meld the Jesus and Mary Chain with kind of 60s girl pop. That's... Not an entirely accurate description, but it gets you in the neighborhood there. I highly recommend uh, Neptune. They're a band more popular in the UK than in the United States. Uh, but Neptune, I had read good reviews of it, and I had bought it, and I've played it many, many times. Uh, I think it's solid all the way through. Number 22, someone I did a video on. That is the least popular band that I've probably done in all of the 2000s. Not hated. I didn't say hated. Just least popular. They Their highest song on Spotify only has 10 or 11,000 plays. That's it. And most of their songs have three, 4,000 plays. This is a band called Awesome Color from Detroit and their album Electric Aborigines. I just read the Pitchfork review tonight because I wanted to know why Pitchfork gave it 4.7 stars. They think it's derivative and it is. But this is this is where we diverge. Pitchfork looks at that as a negative and I look at it as a positive. Um, they said it's like the MC5 as rewritten by Beavis and Butthead. Though they go on to say, not a bad thing. Uh, they remind me more of the Stooges with a little bit of ACDC and Black Sabbath. They're a power trio. They were signed by Thurston Moore of Sonic Youth. They put out three albums. They were all commercial disasters, and they folded. And that's it. I love Awesome Color. Take a song like Taste It which I did a feature on. It was one of my least viewed videos, but go check it out. Electric Aborigines by Awesome Color. It's just um, fuzz, power, trio, Detroit meets some of these other influences like, uh, well, like say ACDC's from Australia, obviously, and Black Sabbath from England. But, um, yeah, heavy Detroit influence. And, yeah, they're derivative, but 
uh, and the singer just well there's two singers but my favorite singer in the band man he just uh, is shredding his vocal cords i love it all right and coming in to close this whole thing out thanks for hanging with me number 21 i have a copy of this juliana hatfield so i don't know if you're familiar with her she was popular in the 90s and she had a a band called the juliana hatfield trio no three the juliana hatfield three and the way i discovered her is um and this is the album how to walk away is i i didn't know anything about her and back i had in the 90s i had cable for a little while i didn't always have cable but i was watching mtv's 120 minutes which would have live performances and and she came on with just her guitar and she did a song called my sister and it blew me away i thought who is that uh you know i just kind of sit there and watch mtv like yeah that's pretty good yeah that's pretty good and then she came on and i was just riveted if you uh and i don't know if you can even watch that on youtube but her performance of my sister on mtv's 120 minutes fantastic so i followed her career ever since and how to walk away these are uh incisive examinations of relationships with great melodies she's a good singer and just her lyrics like she you know she's talking about a relationship that for example on the song my baby which is not a very creative song title but the lyrics are fantastic he used to make me breakfast that's one of the lines um and and we used to what you say we used to now 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 we just have sex and watch tv <laughs> that's i mean it's a great line and you know my baby doesn't love me anymore and she's talking about when a relationship just day by day by day just becomes a little less exciting uh how to walk away uh, is a line from the first song and and that's that's just another great one that song is called um the fact remains that i stayed too long uh before i wised up and you know before i uh had to duck duck when you threw the bottles <laughs> it's just like but then she will flip it around she has a you know if it sounds like she's a man hater or something she turns around she has a song on here called just lust don't think i love you because i answer the door at three in the morning i mean really her lyrics are just you know they're so creative and yet they're so true you know they're so of real life and, and i like that i think she's a great little three minute to four minute um real master of the short song i mean everybody writes about relationships so she's in highly competitive territory and i think she does a great job all music gives that one four and a half stars i think it's a great album i would give um this julianne hatfield we're in four i think we're still in four star territory but that's a good rating for me so thank you for joining me i know the video ran a little long uh but you can tell i really like these albums and i wanted to share them with you it's an unusual um 30 to 21 it's an unusual list i mean the fall and all this latin music um uh, yeah i mean and and you know and stooges like power trios and then relationship pop songs and a dj who goes to india and you know it's quite a varied list but uh check it out and if i get a chance i'll maybe feature a couple of these on um some upcoming upcoming videos so as we say here in uh beautiful mexico 
Buen día.